Do you want red or yellow? Uh, red. Red? Yeah. Oh, okay. Boy. Okay. Diana Papworth is playing a game of backyard bocce ball with her two kids, Sean and Lauren. <laughs> Who won? Sean won. Well, they're not really kids. Oh, yeah. Good one. Okay, Lauren. Your turn. They may seem like playful yeah. six-year-olds, oh. but Sean and Lauren are both in their 30s. She's one lucky winner. And for years, this Santee mother couldn't get any doctor to tell her why they were missing their milestones. It was scary. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know if things were going to get worse. When they were younger, Sean and Lauren also had seizures. Diana eventually accepted that she might never get a diagnosis. And finally, you know, after a certain amount of years, there, you know, you just, you have to go on with life and you have to do the best you can with what you have. So we just kind of gave up. <laughs> but then after decades of dead ends, she was referred to a neurologist at Rady Children's Hospital. This doctor had a hunch about what was going on. She sent Sean and Lauren in for a skin biopsy. But I remember going in there thinking, they're not gonna find anything. We've been dealing with this for 33 years and no one can tell us and it's never even been close. And I honestly felt like they weren't gonna find it. But they did. That doctor had reached out to Hudson Freeze, a scientist at the Sanford Burnham Previs Medical Discovery Institute in La Jolla. Freeze does research on a rare disease known as CDG. That is short for congenital disorders of glycosylation. Glycosylation is a process involving sugar chains vital to normal cellular function throughout the body. There are many genes involved, and when two parents happen to carry a mutation on the exact same gene, they end up with a one in four chance of having a kid with CDG. And when that happens, you get a myriad of different kind of genetic abnormalities and physiological dysfunctions. Ready? Go! Tree. Rabbit. Rabbit. CDG is a spectrum. Different subtypes can lead to different symptoms. Some patients, like Sean and Lauren, live into adulthood with minimal physical problems. Others have more severe impairments and much shorter lifespans. Fries and his colleagues help families narrow in on a CDG diagnosis by looking at skin cells. When they put Sean and Lauren cells under the microscope, they saw the hallmarks of CDG. We got on the phone to mom, you know, minutes, literally minutes after we had made the, the discovery. Good job. <laughs> so cool. He's fast. Ooh, bunny. CDG is already rare, with only a few thousand cases identified worldwide. Sean and Lauren have a particularly rare subtype. They have mutations in a gene called ALG3. And they are the 15th, 16th patients uh, that we know of in the world. Diana Papworth knows there's no cure for a disease this uncommon. But she feels less isolated now, knowing that other families are going through the same thing. I'm not really sure where we go from here, but I'm excited. Because it's so rare, research on CDG has been limited and funding has been scarce. That means not every family gets a clear answer right away. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Donnie Omler's seven-year-old son, Damien, can laugh, but he can't talk. He uses a wheelchair and has other symptoms pointing to CDG. His Linda Vista parents are now used to fielding the question, what's wrong with your son? Uh -huh. <laughs> In the beginning, it really annoyed us because we really didn't know how to answer it because we didn't know the answers. Doctors have also been stumped, but Donnie has been determined to track down a diagnosis. He actually hand-delivered Damien's skin cells to Hudson Freeze's lab for analysis. They've been able to identify a gene, but this particular gene has never been linked with CDG before. They weren't able to find another um, case like Damien's. If Damien does in fact have CDG, he would be the only confirmed case with this subtype in the world, the first patient known to science. So they don't have a prognosis on how long the life expectancy is. Um, they don't know if it's going to get worse. They don't know if it's going to get any better. So there's a lot that they don't know, and we understand that. Freeze says this isn't just research to him. His sister has an undiagnosed disorder, so he understands what these families are going through. For the past six years, he's organized an annual symposium in San Diego where families coping with CDG can meet each other and talk with knowledgeable doctors. He says one of the hardest parts is seeing patients die over the years. Yeah, it's really personal. We celebrate when we, when we can give good news and um, feel for it when, when the patients die. Half of Freeze's funding comes from families donating to help his lab continue working on CDG. 
He hopes his research can lead to answers for families who've had nothing but questions for so many years. David Wagner, KPBS News.